There is no one on this goddamn planet that emulates the black woman. Because she doesn't even know who she is. Let me teach. You're about to get more in this than you, you've gotten in any course that you've taken. Here we go. There are three racial categories, Negroid, Mongoloid, Caucasoid. You might say, Mark, well, what about Latinos? What about people who are from India? Well, there's a triangulation, racially speaking. And, and what I mean by this triangulation, which is to say that there are three main racial categories. Everything else kind of fits in between, meaning that it, it is not a a perfect category that has its own set of distinct features that are remarkably different from another category. Let me illustrate, if you don't mind. Let me illustrate. Here we go. Check this out. Let me teach. So when I say that there's a racial triangulation, the first of all races, and this is agreed upon by the scientists, including the white scientists, is the Negroid. The Negroid, which is representative of the Black. Then we also have, and this is in, not in order of creation, we have the mongoloid. The mongoloid is the Asian type. Then we have the caucasoid. The caucasoid is the white type. Now, understand this. And I'm going to draw this triangle in black because it turns out that genetically speaking, the Negroid actually contains the DNA to create all races of man. The Negroid can create the Caucasoid and the Mongoloid, which is why if you look at the Bushmen in Africa, they have an epicantic eye fold. What is an epicantic eye fold? An epicantic eye fold is the eye fold where the eye opening is more narrow. That's the epicantic eye fold which we tend to think of as a mongoloid feature. It chiefly is. So as we said, the Negroid, this is the black. The Caucasoid is the white. The mongoloid is the Asian. Well, where, where's the person who's from India, Marquette? They don't quite look like the Asian you're describing. Where are they? They're right here. They're right here. They have some Negroid features. You'll notice significant dark skin. And then you look at the skeletal features. It's mongoloid in nature. Or you might name another race. You say, Mark, what about the Latinos? Okay, they might be in between here. They might have Negroid features and certainly have Caucasoid features, which is to say they're not a pure type displaying all of the things that are quintessential to a given category. So now you understand. And just to pictorially you know, give you some visuals, so as you see, we have the epicantic eye fold, which is chiefly Asian. That's kind of how we know the Mongoloid. When you look at the Negroid, we have the skin coloration right? Which you might say that's chiefly Negro. It's unique to them. And when you look at the Caucasoid, they have a number of features that are unique to them. But we'll say uh, a great example of that, which you don't generally find in the others, is the light coloration in the hair or the coloration in the eye. So they have the eyes that are certain color. So those are some of the racial differences between the categories. Now, that's an important thing for me to first brief you on because you didn't get a proper science education because the white liberal woman who is taking over the world currently and going to drive it to destruction unless someone rises up, which is why we're here. She lies and she says that race is a social construct. No, racial race is a biological reality. I've just pointed out a number of biological realities that you guys already know. And we're going to get, we're going to get deeper. Yes, we're going to get deeper here, saints. So those are the differences. Now, one thing you have probably observed because it's clearly true is that mankind, the different racial categories, they were made in pairs, so to speak. You have black man, black woman, white man, white woman, Asian man, Asian woman, right? They're made in pairs and they all have distinct racial features. Now, as I pointed out, the white male is currently dominating financially and in terms of power, right? When you look around people going around the planet Earth conquering things, it's the white guy. He's in power right now. He's fallen out of power, but he's currently running things. Hence, if he is holding the most power as a group, even a white individual male who does not have money or power is still perceived to be more likely to be able to attain it. Huh? So he's viewed in a better situation. Now, this is what happens to the psyche of the black girl who has poor girl syndrome. 
This is what happens. Observe. You see his natural mate. She has certain racial features. What do animals do in nature when they're weaker? They emulate. They imitate the stronger animal. So if the white man is on top, and really the world, it's a man's world, as James Brown said, it's a man's world, it's a man's game. If the white man is on top, then the white woman's also on top. So if you want the strongest, most financially empowered man, what you have to do, you got to steal him from Becky. You got to steal him from Becky. And what is your presumption about what the white man likes? Well, look at his natural pair. The assumption is that he preferences his natural pair for she is a natural reflection of him on a racial level. Huh? So the assumption is that he preferences straight hair or whatever hair formulation the white woman's hair goes into. He preferences light eyes. He preferences fair skin. He preferences a narrow nose bridge. So if we're going to steal the white man from Becky, we being the weaker, the black girl, we're going to imitate the one we perceive to be stronger. We're going to imitate her. Here's an example. Boom. Boom, shaka laka. Now, this is disgusting. Those are two women that used to be black. They were born black. Who knows what they are now? Transracial. And may I remind you, race is real. Race is not a social construct. For there are realities of race. They go as follows. Based on your race, it will affect your build, your skeletal structure. I personally can look at an Asian individual, male or female, from behind, and I can tell you that they're Asian. Not only because of the height, but because of the actual skeletal structure and the portion, the proportions. I can tell. Skin color, obvious. Eye color and eye shape. Hair color and hair texture. Facial structure. You ever notice that Asians tend to have prominent cheekbones? You also notice some Africans have prominent cheekbones. You go to Zambia, a lot of those women have prominent cheekbones. Very beautiful trait. The black has all of the racial traits. We have Rakeley Swimming said, I called a mid-20s college white girl a caucasoid last week, and she had no <laughs> idea what it was. Had to explain the Caucasus Mountains to her. Porta potty education, full of S. Exactly. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Are we teaching now? We teaching. So those are some of the things that allow us to identify your racial category on a physical level. As I pointed out to you, the black female seeking to steal the white man from the white female does what? Her best imitation. And Lord Jesus, it's an imitation. A bad one at that. On the left side, that used to be a black woman. I'll give you guys time to tell me who that used to be. It's sad when you got to pick up your computer and hold it close. I see you. Y'all picking up the computer, holding it close. You know, you remember who that was? No clue? I just can tell the stomach is different than the face. Oh, and coloration? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I want one of you guys to tell me who that was. Uh, I think someone might have it. Lil' Kim? That's right, Lil' Kim. And I'm trying to find a photo of Lil' Kim, like, in her natural state, how she actually looks. But I can't find it. So I'm just going to give you a very old photo of Lil' Kim right now. So if you don't mind. This is a young Lil' Kim. Now, because the black female is raised with high levels of self-hatred, she's never really... You're trying to show? Yeah. But I, I don't know who that random white is on the right. So let me delete that and, and find another one. So Lil' Kim, like most black women, most black females, she's, she was never herself. She was never her true self. Part of this is the failing of the black male. Huh? Absolutely. The male's supposed to be the leader. Yes, these black females grow up with such high levels of self-hatred. There's little Kim. That's what she used to look like. Now, here's after she was famous. I wish I could find a photo of her in high school just so you can see who she really is because she knows not who she really is. Let me see little Kim high school. I want you guys to see what, what a black girl actually looks like. You might have forgotten. I want you guys to see. We're getting deep today. We are getting deep right here. She's... You, you will not find Lil' Kim wearing her real hair. Ain't that a pity? Boy, the hatred is deep. Get her out of there with them big old white veneers. 
Here's a little Kim 96. There we go. Boom. And put that side by side. That's Lil Kim 96. What I want you to understand, ladies and saints, is that this is a deep level of self-hatred, but it also is the human animal behaving on an animal primitive level. Huh? This is what happens when you are in lack of knowledge, you are in lack of male leadership, you are in lack of male protection, which spans farther than just physical protection. Yes, a good father protects the psyche. Let's get deep. So look at the skin. Clearly, little Kim has bleached her skin for skin is a racial feature. And she's bleached it into the white woman's skin as best she could. Her hair was already permed out. She made it blonde to get even closer to the white ideal. She's trying to get whiter than white people. What I mean is whiter than the average white person. The Southern Europeans have dark hair. It's the Northern Europeans that get paler. They have less sun up there, ice up there, cold winters up there. So she's trying to get to the Aryan ideal. She's trying to please, oh boy, like that used to do that. She's trying to please him. And then you look at the eye colors. Yes, indeed, folks, you can't tell because she got those enormous lashes on. But yes, she's wearing colored contacts, colored blue, which is, again, the racial uh, feature of the Northern European. Same thing with this girl down here. Who knows who that is? Or shall I say, who that used to be? Yeah, they said Queen B, Beyonce. Oh, she's not a queen. No, no, no. See, because queens actually have power. Queens have enough power such that they can be themselves. You see, the queen doesn't imitate others. Others imitate the queen. The king doesn't imitate others. Others imitate the king. You'll like this one. Someone said, I believe it's pronounced Jay-Z's wife. <laughs> Nah, she don't belong to Jay. You heard me? She don't belong to Jay because she's not trying to she's not trying to look the part of a black woman. She's trying to look the part of a white woman because she's actually preparing herself to be attractive to a white man. Now, let us look at this juxtaposition here. We have Beyonce on the right closer to who she actually is, closer to her reality as a black human a person in the Negroid racial category. Somebody got to support this education, huh? Call up the United Negro College Fund because all the black folks I know went to school and came out and they still stupid. I need a refund. Now, on the right side, she has braids. This is a chiefly African black hair styling. On the left, she's permed out and maybe shermed out. Furthermore, her skin, they powder it up so that it has this coloration that is not reflective of their true complexion huh so yeah here she is preparing herself for the white man so what you have is an impoverished black female that's, that's generally what black people are they're impoverished the male and the female ironically though whereas you have black american women say that black men are broke it shows how thankless and brain dead they are why do you say that marquette well, I say that because the black American is the wealthiest black person on the planet Earth. Yes, I repeat, the black American is the wealthiest black group. Yes, the black Americans are the wealthiest black people on the planet Earth. Yet the black woman in America would call the black man broke. The only thing impoverished is your mentality, dear. And it's ironic that she would call him broke because her very existence only evidences that some black woman thought that he was wealthy enough to sleep with and procreate with the irony. On PayPal, none of the above is back and said, keep cooking. Here's some more cooking oil. Appreciate you. Shout out to the one supporting the work. And if you're black, you should support this work because you don't even know who the hell you are. I'm the first person to tell you. Huh? Huh? You got these dumbass people calling themselves Eva Tunde. Can't even tell you who the hell you are because they don't know. Now, the black female in America and also in Africa as well, they're doing the same thing, chasing the bag, chasing the white man because they think that he's the bag. And it's not just the black woman. Look at the Filipinas. Yeah. You, you know how many Filipino women you see with white guys? Ah, they chasing the bag. They're doing the same thing. It's poor girl syndrome. Yes. And so they do all of these things 
to visually appeal to the white man, but what about the behavior? What about the psychological things? Do you for a second believe that she said, I'm going to change my outer appearance and maintain my true mentality, my true thinking and behavior while I'm in the presence of this person I fundamentally consider superior? Absolutely not. She is about to give her best Grammy performance and try her best to hold it up over time. And the reason that women got offended when they saw that video clip that said how black women act for white men is because they wanted it to not be true. But how much logic would it make that you would emulate the white woman visually? Everything fake, fake skin, fake nose. Look at how uh, Kim, Kim, chopped up her goddamn nose on the right side she looks far more beautiful to me natural beautiful brown skin skin that shines in the sun skin that is like gold on the left her skin looks dead and pale and lifeless and then she has that goddamn hair hat on and look at her nose it looks like a creation it looks like she had the same bad dr michael jackson had and why did she do that? She tried to achieve the narrow nose bridge that you would observe in the uh, Northern European. And let me break that down for you. And I've done it before. Our racial realities, those biological realities, are generally a result of environment, physical environment. The blacks, they generally will have a shorter nose, a wider nose bridge, greater nose uh, openings, nostrils. Why? We come from hot regions so that the air can get in to cool the brain, which is critical. The whites, ice age, came from places that are very cold. They have a long nose. Why? So that the air has time to warm up before it gets to the brain. So you're not bringing in uh, ice cold air into the brain. Why do they have hair that hangs down like it's dead? because they come from cold places and they need the neck covered to be warm. Where do the blacks come from? Warm places. That's why the hair grows out and reaches up toward the sun with life. It doesn't cover the neck or else you would be too hot because you're in a hot region. But yet we have a lot of strange things in this era. You have dumb black chicks who want to look like the white girls. So they kill their hair with chemicals. Then ironically, you got dumb white girls. They want to look like the black girls and they want to go get this beach tan. They want to look like they're at the beach all the time. Well, that's comical because most of the Europeans we idolize, the blonde, blue-eyed ones, they don't come from places with sunny beaches. So where do you get this idea of a tall, tanned blonde woman that doesn't even make sense most whites who come from northern europe are pale and don't do well in the sun but it's a mass psychology of misinformation hey we have rise and rise academy said finally caught you live peace to the saints true education in a real way peace to the saints we have tyree came in on cash up and said peace to the saints i would have loved being in your class quet oh we was going up in a real way we was going up now, so we have an understanding that women in general are never satisfied, right? The white one want to look like the black one. The black one want to look like the white one. But we know who's on top. It's the white one. The reason we say that is because when you look at the different racial categories, we find that they're all trying to move in the same direction. You look at the Negroid, the Caucasoid, and the Mongoloid. We see that they're all trying to move toward the Aryan ideal. When women get colored contacts, what color do they get? Do they get purple because it's a cool color? Do they get orange because it's a cool color? Do they get uh, yellow because it's a cool color? No, they get blue or green or hazel. They get the coloration of another racial category. They don't go out and get neon colors because they're cool. They get the colors that emulate racial features of a different type of woman when women go out and bleach their hair they go and bleach it blonde when they color the hair they color it lighter huh when they go and chop up their nose they chop up their nose to look like some imaginary snow white disney character which actually doesn't exist because 
pretty much when you travel around, you see the whites actually have quite large noses, but it's the narrow nose bridge that you guys are trying to achieve. And when the black woman does that, we already have a shorter nose, right, than the whites, and it's not prominent coming from the brow. And so when you when you chop it more narrow, you have this very small looking Michael Jackson type nose. And this is life or death knowledge. This is life or death. Why do I say that? Look at these women. Look at this woman in the upper left corner. That is death that you see on her. That is death. She has tried to kill what she actually is. That's self-negation. That is death that you see in her dark eyes. This is life or death knowledge. Knowledge of self is a life or death matter. When you hate yourself and don't want to be what you really are, you might sometimes try to take yourself out of this world. And that is what many are doing. Huh? Now, Real quick, let's let's study the mentality, if you will, of these brain dead black chicks. And I love black women, but I love women that are actually black. You heard me? The ones that are actually black, not the ones that are fake black. And they have to know what black is, which is deeper than your skin color. It is deeper than how you speak your English. So I'm going to play this clip for you just so you know what we're talking about. Mark, oh, teach Mark a move. Oh, Just teach Mark one move real quick. So there's a couple pieces. Number one, I said teach Mark a move. You know, we're out in Vegas. Uh, we had just come out of a very popular restaurant in Las Vegas. I said teach Mark a move. Now, uh, this individual, her background involves some dancing. So we know that she knows how to dance. And she's willing to show out, uh, which is African-American speak for, you know, like make, make a scene and like, you know, be in the center of attention, which is fine. And I said, show Mark, because she had been showing, demonstrating the whole day, uh, a particular affection for Mark. And I think we all know why it is. I think we all know why it is. And one thing that is typical of the female, we expect them to be demure at some level, to be low key, not, not to throw it at you, especially not in an aggressive way. When the woman becomes a pursuer of the man, she certainly is not operating in a feminine mode. She's operating in a hunter mode, which is more masculine in nature. When the woman is throwing herself at the male, it shows a level of desperation. Very common among these types. And there's some, a lot of things we're about to break down in this conversation. Another thing you should note from a body language standpoint is where she's throwing herself at him. If you would observe the way he is reacting He's not engaging her such that she reaches back and literally grabs his neck and turns him into a stripper pole, actually. She turns him into a human stripper pole and continues with the antics. A human stripper pole. And clearly he's there enjoying the vibe and the experience, but he is not showing a particular interest for her, though she's continuously throwing herself at him. Because in her mind, she has decided that in this environment, he is her best opportunity. This is actually quite commonly a function of income. It's not a function of Mark being the best looking guy or the tallest guy or the most well-built guy or even the wealthiest guy in reality. It has much to do with the perception of what he might be because of the racial group he belongs to. And for the dimwits in the uh, chat, of which there are always a multitude, I saw one person wrote, he's not white. He's actually the definition of white. I know both of his parents. His father is German from Germany, born and raised, fluent in Germany, uh, fluent in German. His mother is Portuguese from Portugal, fluent in Portuguese. Now, uh, they're both European from Europe. That would be white. Europe is the factory of white people, in case you didn't know. So he is indeed white. Now, he might have a tan from travel. He might have a big black beard, but the ball is white. And she saw that, and we all saw that. And what I'm pointing your attention to right now is that she has what I'd like to coin as poor girl syndrome, PGS. She has PGS, poor girl syndrome. And this is actually quite common. In fact, this does not only ail the black woman, this ails the Filipino woman. This ails the Latina. This ails any woman who comes from a retrograde economy, a woman who comes from a developing country, or a woman who comes from the lower class. Yes, you can find white women who are the same way. 
Albanians, Latvians, whatever the case is, you, they're in a, a down uh, a down economy. Yeah, they're going to try to catch a guy who's successful. Now, it just so happens that in our modern world, financial success or status is racially coded. In fact, you might say color coded. There's an expectation that at the top of wealth and power is the white man. Second runner up, you have the Asian man. Then you have others, essentially, and at the bottom, dead last, you have the black man. Huh? Yes, wealth is racially coded. Hence, when they look at the white man, they see power and dollar signs. Whether it's true or not, this is a stereotype, and we all know that stereotypes root from somewhere real. We, we just getting into it. And poor girl syndrome, which I've coined right now, a definition is behaving in respect to imagined traits and preferences of wealthy or better positioned men. So you're, you're behaving according to what you imagine this man wants, what his preferences are. You're imagining because you don't know, because you're not that race, you're not that culture, you didn't grow up in that income strata, you didn't grow up in his community, so you're imagining what he prefers and what he likes, and you're trying to perform that identity. Let's get into it. Ooh, we're going to get into this. And I'm about to bust out some images, and we're going to get deep. Now, here's another thing I want to point out real quick, and this is why women must be subject to men. A thing I saw commonly in the comments, of which there are 3,000, you saw many black females saying things like, oh, she's just having fun. Making yourself appear to be promiscuous, that's fun. Shaking your body parts in a sexual fashion in the public, that's fun. Misrepresenting yourself and your family, that's what you call fun. Well, see, I thought fun was like playing Yahtzee or you know, watching a movie in the movie theater or you know, playing a board game or watching a sporting event. That's fun. Making yourself the center of attention uh, through sexual means, that is not fun. That is a grab at attention. That's what that is. Now, let's break down the psychology of this beastly woman. Now, mind you, when I say this beastly woman, I'm not referring to this individual woman. I'm not referring to all black women. I'm referring to the common mindset in the black woman today. Now, let me teach. So now let's take a look at some of these comments, right? And I appreciate the, uh, the hardworking individual who went through and let everyone know that we had this live session. And, and mind you, you got big mouth black women that all of a sudden they're quiet as a church mouse. Have you ever heard a black woman being quiet? You ever heard of a black American woman being quiet? Now they got 3000 goddamn comments on this video. But when a black man comes up and shares knowledge, they're scared and terrified. The black woman is terrified of a real black man. Why? Because it's like seeing Bigfoot or the unicorn. You've never seen one before. It's a terrifying, powerful thing. It's not only the black woman that is afraid of the black man. Many others are. Most of your YouTubers are afraid of me as well. Let that be known. But... They had big mouths, 3,000 comments. We went through, replied to 500 of them. Yes, indeed, 500 of them. None of them would show up. None of them will show up just to express themselves. You should wonder why. Why is that? 500 of them, none of them will show up and speak their piece. But I promise you one thing. As soon as this live session is over and you can comment below the video from the anonymity of your, your keyboard, and you can make up lies and try to excuse away your filthy, self-hating behavior, oh, they'll be in the comments. Same thing with the nerds and the, and the haters. They'll be in the comments, but they will never come on and represent themselves. Cockroaches scatter when the light is out. And there's a bright light of education today. May there be some who will learn. Let's go through and hear the stupidity real quick. So... This person writes, she is who she is. It has nothing to do with black women as a whole. Oh, don't you wish that were true? I absolutely wish that were true. There are very few who are actually individuals. Listen to me. She is who she is. Let's see how much of an individual she is. Is she wearing makeup like every other woman? Yep. 
Oh, seems like she's following the crowd. Is she wearing fake hair like every other black American woman? Yep. Seems like she's following the crowd. Where'd she learn that from if she is who she is? No, much of who we observe people to be is a result of culture. It is a result of enculturation, that which you are taught by the society. Very rarely is it the result of an individual choice. There are very few of us who are individuals, which means that our mind is turned on. Most of your minds are turned off. Huh? No. She is typical. She is not an individual. And they try to excuse it away by suggesting that, no, that's just her. No, she is a good representation of the average black woman today. I say that as one who has lived in Philadelphia, Baltimore, uh, St. Louis, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and the list goes on. I've seen the black woman. This is her. Another one writes, all I see here is friends having fun. Has nothing to do with race. All I see here is friends having fun. This is a dangerous mentality, which you must stay away from. This kind of stupidity, this is a specious argument, which is to say it is deceptively attractive, seemingly plausible, but errant, illogical. I just see friends having fun. Do you know that they're friends? Actually, Mark just met her that night. They're not friends in actual fact. Furthermore, because something may appear fun, that doesn't mean that it's right. I promise you that. That doesn't mean that it's right. Do you think people who do evil might do evil with a smile on their face? Do you think a predator, a sexual predator, when he is able to capture his prey, you think maybe he might smile? Maybe he might look like he is having fun? Still while doing wrong? That is not an argument. It looks like they're having fun. It's idiocy. Clearly comes from a female, and I love women. They're of love. They tend to not be very critical of the world. They're just having fun. Oh, that's cute. No, she's making herself look like a harlot. And I don't say that to disrespect this individual woman. I like her personally. But this is a common thing you observe in the black female. You see them on Instagram, on TikTok, twerking in restaurants, twerking in public places making us appear to be a low-class, immoral people. The black woman is promiscuous. If she wasn't promiscuous, we would not have such astronomical levels of STIs and single-family homes. Now, I'm not saying the guys are any better. They're indiscriminate and have low standards. Having intercourse with these fat, beastly, masculine women, they're low. I just speak the truth about both, about what is typical of both. And mind you, if you're a black woman, you probably have a big mouth. Bring your big mouth here. I will let you speak your piece. But they are all silent because they can see and subconsciously they know the truth of things. The truth is terrifying to the wicked. Furthermore, let's see what other foolish things they say. Y'all make everything about race. No, we don't make things about race. It just tends to surface a lot, especially when you're dealing with people who are provincial. For example, you wrote y'all. Are you from Texas or are you speaking broken English? Also known as Ebonics. Also what has been wrongly called uh, black American English or African American vernacular. See, you're speaking in a racial language, really coming from your ethnicity, but it is only the black race that speaks in this language. Unless you're a white Southerner or you're from Oklahoma or Texas and you're not. So race is written all over you. Your ethnicity is what you're representing on a regular basis, even though you don't know it because you're so dim-witted and provincial that you're so damn black you don't even realize. It. You heard me? And there's nothing wrong with being black if you're black. Nothing wrong with being white if you're white. But don't say that things are being made racial when they indeed are racial. Huh? Carrying on. Look at the stupidity in these comments. Then someone writes, Becky was clearly jealous. I think Becky is a pejorative for a uh, white woman. 
And you know what? There's there's truth there. The white woman was, I don't know if she was jealous of the black woman or jealous of the black woman getting attention over her. And I don't think this was racial. I think this was a woman thing. You know, they they want attention. And she sees this chick is getting more attention. She ain't pleased. So absolutely, she side-eyed the little bitty. Shout out to Rakeley. He writes, I'm 6'8". God damn. Throw your boy a few inches. Pause. I'm 6'8", solid five figures a month. Sound white. Black women as a whole are the least welcoming and warm. Let's talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about it, Rakeley Swimming. Let's talk about it. Because you know what? You're speaking the truth. Because many of them are impoverished and dim-witted, don't know what a man is, They only have their imagination of what a man could be, which is the white man. They only have an imagination of what a family could be, which is the white family they see on popular movies like Home Alone. When they see you, they don't understand. You see, they see you. You're a high-earning black man. Uh Uh-oh, got to scratch my head. He's not what I'm used to. They see you. You speak well. And if you are as articulate and eloquent as a white man, when they observe the very same trait in you, they're scared. And so they start to stigmatize it and say, you talk white rather than the truth being you speak well. Huh? Yes. And you know what? It's deep because they hate themselves so much on a racial level that they cannot accept you. They cannot accept you because you being a black God Six, eight, earning well, speaking well, looking good. Oh, they must rebuke you because you are a representation of them. And they do not believe that anything black can be good. So they must reject you and carry on in their beliefs in white supremacy. The only problematic white supremacists are the blacks, the Asians, the Latinos, those who are not white beautiful thing to be white and be a white supremacist it makes perfect sense but to be black and be a white supremacist oh it's a it's a sad reality huh he writes it's a look of disappointment and disbelief oh i agree i agree he writes like i'm an illusion see we already talked about that before i even read the whole thing precisely i experienced the same thing Because you have dim-witted, hair-hatted hooligans at this very moment in the chat saying things like, oh, blah, 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 you dusties. Now, I agree. Most black men are dusty. You ain't lying. I would never defend the, the state of the black male today. It's pathetic. In fact, I'd be right there with you condemning it. But I would go one step further and actually teach and train, which is what I do on a regular basis, lifting them up. First place to lift them up is mentally. And my dear sister, the first place you need to be lifted up is mentally. And if you were wise, rather than being a demon in the chat, you would join on and share some knowledge, maybe pick up some knowledge, but you would stay a demon in the chat because you would hate to speak to a black man like me. You'd hate it. There was someone that used that word. um, So I'm putting the link in the chat for her. Oh, she'll never click that link. She'll never click that link because... When she gets on and she wants to say, oh, black men are broke. I'm like, oh, that's funny because I have a Maybach in my driveway right now that was just dropped off to me. And I have a Lexus also in the driveway right now. And I also have an I-8 in the driveway right now. That's about a million bucks damn near. Okay. So what are we talking about? What are we talking about, love? They, they don't want to come and have a conversation with me. It's strange. Please forgive me. I forgot the Rolls Royce. Please forgive me. So yes, we're talking about a million dollars in cars. Okay. That's four cars, right? Yeah. That's four four luxury cars? Yeah. At this property? Got you. Okay, we have Paul said, as I observe the results of a society ruled by weak men and unruly women, I now understand why our ancestors were ruthless and uncompromising. Carry on, Saint. Indeed. Indeed. We have Nick said, so many facts being spoken. I fully back this message. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. And I, I will point out to you, there are so many false prophets among you. There are so many dishonest teachers among you. They're panhandling preachers. They give you a kind word to comfort your weak psyche. Oh, black queen. The black woman, you are a queen. How, Sway? 
in what society has a queen been the one that emulates others? If you ever listen to the Spanish language that is coming from Spain, the European country that created it, they have a lisp in their Spanish. Instead of saying Ibiza, you might say Ibiza. Their Spanish sounds more similar to what you might hear in Puerto Rico. There's a lisp on their Spanish. And the story goes that the reason there's a lisp on their Spanish is because one of the Spanish kings had a lisp. And because he was the king, he was in power, he was royal. His mistake became a merit. His deficiency became a merit. They said, if you have a list, we have a list because you're the king. We emulate you. There's no one on this goddamn planet that emulates the black woman because she doesn't even know who she is.